everybody, Itchy here, and it's time for another fun filled. Uh, huh? Uh, what the? Uh, stop killing yourself! Stop killing yourself! Stop killing yourself! <sighs> Bastard's dead. I'm finally the only bobblehead in here. <gasps> what? Uh, God damn it, it was just a freaking dream. Next time I'm gonna fucking kill him, I swear. House were trying one last time to snare him, but it failed. He fell. He was free of them. As the shed roof rushed up to meet him, a feeling of euphoria sang in his heart, and for the briefest moment he laughed. He had won. It was nearly sunset when Jim pulled up outside Poacher's cottage. When he saw Ken's Range Rover parked on the grass verge outside, Jim felt his bowels turn to ice. He'd been desperately hoping that Ken was off down a pub somewhere getting drunk, that maybe he'd switched off his phone, or perhaps he had it on silent mode and didn't know it was ringing. But that was impossible. Ken never switched the phone to silent mode, and he always answered it, provided he was able to. At first, when Ken hadn't come back to the office that afternoon, Jim and Lindsay had made jokes about how the ghosts at Poacher's Cottage had probably chased him up a tree. They'd called him, but he hadn't answered, so they'd called his home. Maureen had answered. She sounded drunk, but she was able to confirm that Ken hadn't returned home since leaving for work that morning. That was when the jokes had stopped. They'd rung the other clients that Ken had scheduled for attention that afternoon, but no one had seen him. Jim got out of his car and looked at the cottage. The dark windows looked back at him across the gathering shadows in the front garden. Jim raised his hands to either side of his mouth and shouted, Ken! There was no reply. Ken! You still there, mate? Some birds were singing, but otherwise all was silent. Jim cracked his knuckles and pushed open the garden gate. The sun was setting behind the house, and as he walked up the path and into shadow, Jim felt a distinct drop in temperature. It was enough to cause him to stop and call again. Ken! He looked at each of the windows in turn, hoping to see a sign of life flicker behind one of them. Then he realized there were other things he might see, and so he reached into his pocket and took out his mobile phone. He selected Ken's number from the address book and called him. He pressed the phone to his ear, and after a moment, he heard the call connect. At the same time, in his other ear, distant yet distinct, he heard a phone start ringing. Jim held his phone away from his head and listened. He hung up. The ringing stopped. He phoned Ken again. The ringing resumed. Oh, shit! Ken! Jim cried out. He began to move, following the sound of the ringing phone around the side of the house. Ken! It grew louder, until finally he rounded the corner of the house and saw the shed. The ringing was coming from inside. Ken? Jim saw the hole in the roof. Broken timbers slanted into it at crooked angles, and shattered tiles lay all around. He looked up to the smashed window above the shed. Oh, fuck! Ken! Jim found himself suddenly running towards the shed. He yanked the door open, and more tiles fell through the gloom, either clattering down onto the floor 
or landing softly on the body that lay twisted beneath the yawning hole in the roof. Somewhere on the body, Ken's telephone was ringing. Jim hung up, and the shed fell silent. He stepped inside. Oh, fuck. Ken. Oh, no, mate. Jim reached out a tentative hand toward the garden fork that jutted awkwardly from Ken's body, then stopped. Ken's dead eyes were staring at the fork, his face frozen in an expression of horrified disbelief. Then Jim was staggering backwards and out of the shed. He turned and ran back around to the front of the house. In a moment he was down the path and out of the gate, scrabbling with his car keys a moment before he realized he hadn't locked it. <laughs> Shit! He yanked the door open and fell into the driver's seat, jamming the key into the ignition and starting the car. He slammed it into gear and floored the accelerator. Clots of grassy earth flew from under the wheels as the car roared out and onto the road, careening left and right before straightening up and speeding away. Away from Poacher's Cottage. Away from whatever had driven Ken out of the window and away from that garden fork. Because no matter how he'd fallen through that shed roof, there was no way he could have fallen onto the fork, rolled over, and then rammed its prongs down into the floor beneath him. No way in hell. Ah, Ken. While the police and ambulance services may take his body away, I feel Ken will be staying on at Poacher's Cottage, if only in spirit. He wanted to be reunited with Poacher's Cottage every year, and now he can be. In fact, they'll always be together. A happy ending in the Hall of Mirrors.